wise man once said, why should we not all live in peace and harmony? We look up at the same stars, we are fellow passengers on the same planet, and we dwell beneath the same sky. What matters it along which road? Each individual endeavors to find the ultimate truth. Behind me there sits a young man whom you don't know because you haven't met him yet. You'll have a chance to meet him in just a moment. He comes from another part of this same world that you and I live in. He looks up, however, at the same stars and the same sky. But who is he? Why is he here? What does he do? Where does he come from? Well, those are all things that I think he can tell you better than I can. My name is Joe Lane. I'm a Brazilian studying in your country, agricultural engineering. When this is my second visit to your country, my first ended when I was drafted and I had to go home serve in the army. My hometown is the city of Sao Paulo. Large industrial city, it's uh, something like a mixture of New York and Detroit and Pittsburgh might be like. Like New York, it's a melting pot of all races, nationalities. In fact, my own were ancestors were Scots, came to Brazil 150 years ago. It's uh, situated in the southern part of Brazil, where the population is a little denser quite a bit denser than the rest of Brazil. And the, uh, the way of living is very much like uh, here in this country. The, uh, the races in Sao Paulo, there are many of them, uh, are not a question of uh, well, they're not the question in people's minds. Uh, there's not much distinction of races, more of an economical or class distinction. For example, a Negro in uh, Brazil is not considered a Negro unless he is, uh, except when he has no drop of white blood in him at all. The uh, population of Brazil is uh, rather sparse as a whole. The vast areas of the interior of Brazil are very sparsely po populated. There are even some areas there where totally unexplored. Uh, if any white man has gone in, certainly hasn't come out to tell about it. In these areas, there's a great deal of room for more people. The uh, the climate is pleasant throughout most of it. The agricultural potential is great. However, the transportation so far is not. There is uh, virtually no transportation except uh, rivers and horseback, occasional bad road, very little traffic. Not uh, long ago, I was sent up to the frontier country to looking for some land by a group in Sao Paulo who wanted to purchase some grazing land. I rode for a month, averaging about 35 miles a day to find this land. Eventually they bought it uh, at, after paying the taxes and other costs, they paid about 50 cents an acre for it. And uh, that was actually quite expensive. There's still a lot of free land left in Brazil where a person can squat and uh, after a suitable development, the government will let them have the land and you start paying the taxes. Now this, uh, this company wanted this land for cattle. The uh, cattle business is a pretty big business in Brazil. It has a, Brazil has the fourth biggest herd in the world. However, we don't export very much. They're, uh, the home consumption is uh, enough to take care of most of the meat. In fact, the diet of uh, the average Brazilian is over 50% uh, uh, meat. The rest, starch and a few vegetables. No milk like you Americans are used to. The biggest agricultural export product, however, is uh, coffee, as you know. 
And uh, Brazil depends on its sale of coffee to the United States to uh, to keep up its supply of the much needed dollar. Much needed because uh, we don't export very much to the United States. The taxes, are, the tariffs are a little high. So we uh, can only export to the States what the United States hasn't got. The uh, the uh, average family in Brazil has not got a car. And if they do have a car, it's usually for the use of the husband. So the housewife has to do her shopping by means of buses or streetcars. Now, there are uh, no big markets, uh, as you know them here in the States. And there, but there are fairs big fairs, several parts of the city each day. These fairs are, they're selling mostly uh, fresh foods, meat, so that the housewife doesn't have to worry too much about uh, buying. She can buy conveniently more than once, at least once a week, maybe twice, maybe three times. There are many corner stores where uh, they sell food doesn't spoil like uh, wheat, or rather flour, rice, salt, and so forth. The it's a funny thing I've noticed that here in the States uh, about the the only place where clubs are very popular. At home we don't have uh, many clubs. The, you have here the all sorts of ladies clubs and uh, you have uh, old elks and moose and so forth. Another thing I noticed here in the States uh, was the system of uh, schools, quite different to ours. At uh, first grade, we, first, second, third, and fourth grade, fifth grade, we did the same things that children do in this country. However, in the sixth grade, we uh, started to learn, besides uh, studying our own language, Portuguese, we started to learn English and French and uh, either Spanish or Latin. We were uh, full of languages before we were very old. The schools are, are the required for all children up through, through the ninth grade, and after that, no longer required. And in fact, there are not very many that go through colleges. There aren't very many colleges in Brazil. There are a few good ones, but not very big, many of them. The uh, people I found in this country to be very helpful and kind. Uh, they, when I first came up to the United States um, five years ago, uh, I couldn't speak any English. I could understand a little bit, but uh, I couldn't speak hardly anything at all. And I found that people were quite helpful trying to, well, they tried to, to uh, help me, even though I couldn't understand them, and they could not understand me. I remember one lady in Boston who, uh, after trying to explain to me the directions to where I wanted to go, she finally uh, gave up and took me there herself. It impressed me very much. I hadn't been in this country more than three weeks then, I don't think. Uh, yeah. I kind of, uh, 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 like to, uh, travel a great deal, and, uh, though well, I've traveled all over Brazil, I'd like to see a little more of this country. Uh, popular a uh, misconception, I think, in most of the world is that the Amazon Valley is a hot, steamy place. It isn't. It's a very pleasant place to live. And there lies uh, probably the future of Brazil. Its agricultural potential is uh, quite great, and uh, there's plenty of room there. The Amazon Basin, all of it, including headwaters of the Amazon and so forth, probably the same size as the United States is. And population about... Uh, 
Well, the population of all of Brazil, about one third of the United States, and the population in the Amazon Valley probably about uh, maybe one twentieth of this country. The Brazil Brazil has a, a fairly liberal immigration laws, so that there are a great many people going there. But uh, Man once said that uh, uh, if they took all the surplus population of Europe, they could throw it in the middle of Brazil and uh, never see them again, never find them again. There's that much room there. Now, I don't know if that's strictly true, but uh, it's an idea that very few people live. The uh, relations between uh, Brazil and the States have the last several decades been uh, quite good. No uh, serious troubles at all. However, the relations between Brazil and some of his neighbor neighbors have not been so good. Uh, and But I hope uh, they'll, they'll improve a little bit. They ought to. We should live a little uh, in a more friendly manner than we have been. For example, the, uh, in the border between Argentina and Brazil, there's a large waterfall. So, uh, nothing has been done to make that into uh, hydroelectric power because of, the, because of the rivalry. No one country wants to step ahead of the other. I have uh, greatly enjoyed my visit with you here these last few minutes as I have greatly enjoyed uh, my stay among you uh, my, in the past years. I hope to return again many times before uh, or rather after my studies are over. Well, you've just met Joe Lane from Brazil. We asked Joe to meet you today because, well, uh, Joe's case is a little different from most of the visitors on this program under the same stars. Joe has been here uh, a few years now. Uh, his earliest impressions of first coming to the United States are, are dimming off. Uh, he comes from Brazil, but he uh, comes of Scottish parentage. We wanted to... Uh, to meet a young man from another part of our hemisphere who does dwell in the same world, you and me. We wanted you to meet him and to learn about his country. We wanted you to meet him and to know something more about him and his people, the people of Brazil, who, with us, dwell beneath the same sky and look up at the same stars.